Uh, good morning, Louise. Uh, good morning, everyone, as well. Yes, uh, welcome back to the Conservative Party conference. We're here in Manchester today. Uh, we're speaking to the Prime Minister for about sort of good 15 minutes or so from 7.45 onwards. Uh, we will be playing a large chunk of that out a little bit later on as well, if you missed it, but to dissect what they've heard from mm -hmm. Boris Johnson. We've got uh, Sonia Soda from The Observer and Camilla Tomini from The Telegraph as well. Thank you so much for, for coming. I know you've been here for a few days and <laughs> been enjoying the Conservative Party conference, mm. listening in uh, just behind the camera mm. to what the Prime Minister had to say. What was the, what sort of the overriding feeling from, uh, interestingly, what he had to say about the, the Irish backstop. It, it seems that the, the plans that we were hearing about aren't actually the plans. Well, indeed, and I think he wants to unveil more of the plans in his speech tomorrow and equally not show his cards too early because he needs to go off and face off the EU27 at the summit later on um, in October. Uh, you're all trying to pin him down on the detail. He doesn't want to give it because we've already had cross briefings which are suggesting that some of the detail that they understand it is wrong. And, of course, we are in the negotiation game of anything coming out of Brussels seems to be no, 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 and the government's pushing back on that, but with what now, 30 days to go until Brexit mm. Day? We're in October, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. Th that landing strip for him to get a deal seems to get narrower and narrower. Mm. Yeah, I thought it was really obvious. You were pushing him hard, saying, what's the solution? He was very keen to say what it wasn't and dismiss all this talk of, of these centres away from the border that would do checks. But he wasn't able to say what his plan was. And while I take your point, he might be waiting to unveil it in his speech. At the same time, this is a very big, serious international negotiation. It's not just the viewers at home who don't know what his plan is. The EU don't know what it is. And it's not generally the way these negotiations tend to work. Um, you know, it, it, the EU would have expected to see something a bit more concrete. And there's a lot of frustration on the Brussels side that the Prime Minister keeps on saying, I've got a magic solution to the Irish backstop. But these papers that were leaked last night, solutions put forward in the last couple of weeks, they're exactly what Theresa May uh, mm. was talking about two years ago, which got rejected by the EU. And that was the point. I, I said to him, you know, the accusation is this is... Theresa May's deal with a blonde haircut. Yeah. Now, he, he, he said that's that's not the case. But it, we were speaking to Dominic Grieve as well at ten past seven this morning, and he's, he was answering that question that some are saying that in talking up a no deal on October the thirty first, and keep mentioning that and keep that in the game. Actually, if you can come back with any deal to Parliament, you can then maybe get that through. Well, is it a deal? Is it a case of any deal will do, right? And there's this sense that there are a number of MPs who, for them now, it's no longer a case of hard or soft Brexit, but hard or easy. How can we get this to happen so that we can all move on with our lives and hopefully win a next general election because we've done what our voters in Leave constituency have asked of us, and indeed pragmatic Remainers who just want it to be over? Um, of course, this is a really risky strategy because you've got a number of so-called Spartans, and we've had Steve Baker actually was on Radio 4 this morning, saying, look, we aren't going to be voting for Theresa May's withdrawal agreement you know, with a blonde wig on it. Uh, we're expecting something significant to happen to the backstop. And let's not forget there were a number of conservative Brexiteers for whom the backstop was one of many concerns about that deal. But this is about sales. This is about now, with 30 days to go, can Boris Johnson package this deal in a way that it appeals to the public and to MPs. But I would say that it's going to be, if that's voted on, I would say it's going to be like a 5 to 10 mm, yeah. MP margin either it's side. Tight, yeah. it? Does it appeal to Labour MPs? I yeah, mean, this is that's the other a question. really big question. And after the rancorous scenes, I think, that we've seen in Parliament this week, if Boris Johnson's strategy really is to get a deal through and to win over some Labour MPs in support, last week didn't really seem like he was in that mode. And I think it makes it more difficult for Labour MPs to swing behind a deal mm. that he might get given some of those scenes that we saw in Parliament on Wednesday night. The other big issue around the Prime Minister at the moment is yeah. these allegations. Uh, again, we asked him about that, and this is... Uh, we'll just play you a little bit of the interview. This is what he had to say, particularly when asked about those recent allegations. I've said what I've said about that. Uh, you, they're your, not, they're your not, they're you're not, not true. Not... They're not true. It's obviously very sad that someone should make such allegations. They're not true. And I um, think, really, by comparison with what we're doing, which is taking forward a, a very dynamic domestic agenda, uh, they're, they're frankly... And that is something I think... They are frankly... I mean, yes, you know, I, I said what I had to say about those things, but what we need to do, if I may say so, is concentrate on a fantastic, progressive domestic agenda. And that has been his line, isn't it? Mm. Yes, uh, the allegations are there, I deny them, uh, it didn't happen, 
can I talk about my domestic agenda? But actually, when I, when I did press him, he, mm. he does he did concede that there is a trust issue, and he mm. understands the importance of that. I think that's right, and I think there's been a lot of sort of um, debate about how much these sorts of allegations will really affect Boris Johnson. And I think actually, if you look at Boris Johnson's core voters, um, you know, perhaps they sort of think of Boris Johnson as, as someone who's, you know, this sort of character, so maybe it won't affect him too much. The thing is, I think if Boris Johnson wants to win a majority in a general election, he's got to appeal to people who might not naturally go for Boris Johnson as mm. Prime Minister, and that's young people and more women. His, weight, his ratings are terrible with women. They're not great. The Conservatives aren't doing very well with young people as well. And I think these sorts of allegations, I think in the interview, he looked very uncomfortable when you were pressing on it. Um, he, he wanted to move straight onto his domestic policy agenda and it sort of, to me, looked a bit like he was kind of you dismissing and moving on. I just disagree with that point. I thought he actually looked quite relaxed about it, which was what surprised me. Previously, the Prime Minister has never commented on anything private. The tide turned earlier on this week when his spokesman briefed journalists Which saying, is the change. Yeah, which is the change, yeah. saying we are going to comment on this and we deny it. And obviously that has seen a to and fro on Twitter about whether it's true or not. It's interesting that because it kind of sets a precedent for him now to comment on any pub, uh, story about his private life. But actually, I, he seemed fairly relaxed about it, which I found quite surprising in that sense. And secondly, while I take your point about how will that be viewed by women and indeed younger people, there are some who I've spoken to, not just delegates at this conference, but I've just asked in Vox Pops around, you know, how much do you care about some of this, these allegations? And I think for leavers, they double down because they're like, oh, they're throwing everything at him. They're throwing the law at him. They're throwing these personal allegations. It's not fair. It's, pardon the pun, but below the belt. So. I think it attracts mixed reactions. Yeah, it'd be, I mean, if we do ever do get to a general election, it'd be fascinating to see yes. how all these things play out. Really interesting to hear your assessment of that. Thank you, Camilla. Thank you, Simon.